Hi, my name is Liz and this is the Pink Lookbook. Fashion Month is in full swing and today I'd like to take you to the big four of fashion weeks. Paris, New York, Milan and London and I'd like to discuss the origins of runway shows and how the fashion weeks actually came about. Let's take a closer look. It is no surprise that runway shows started in Paris in the mid and late 19th century. Those who could afford more expensive clothes for multiple occasions went to tailors and the fittings took place either at the studios of the tailors or the tailors visited the customers at home. Everything changed with uh, Charles Frederick Worth. You may have heard about him he is often referred to as the father of haute couture and he did something very innovative. He showcased one cohesive collection. This is very normal today, but at the time this was very new. And he invited his customers to his studio, but not one-on-one. -on -one. He invited a select group of customers and it was very practical. He wanted to showcase the products and sell them. It was not about the event around it like today with celebrities, influencers, photographers. It was by invitation only and just to showcase his products. Another Parisian designer applying a similar approach was Paul Poiret. He was known for his lavish parties and he asked the people he invited to dress up. Probably one of his most famous events was the Thousand and Second Night Party and he showcased harem trousers and lampshade dresses. In the 20s and 30s, these runway shows became more intimate again and more client focused. A lot of designers didn't want photographers there because they were worried about being copied. And this tradition that was started by Worth of showcasing collections often twice a year was kept in Paris until long after the Second World War and it only slowly opened up towards journalists and buyers. When we think of runway shows today, there is a big theatrical dimension to them. It's about this bus that I mentioned before and we actually owe this to America because of course retailers and designers in America watched closely what was happening in Paris and it all actually started with a rather small store in New York. The Eric Brothers started to host runway shows from 1903 onwards. And they were so successful with these shows that from 1910 onwards also department stores copied them. The only difference was that the department stores also added themes and they hosted uh, these runway shows in their restaurants at lunchtime or during tea time. And in the book Land of Desire by William Leach, the author describes a runway show at the department store Wanamaker in 1908, which actually had the theme of the court of Napoleon and Josephine. And these runway shows became so popular that they became a very important part of New York society. While Paris was the the birthplace for runway shows. It was not the birthplace for fashion weeks. It was again America. And this is where runway shows and fashion weeks slowly became more formalized over the decades. The first step towards a more formalized fashion week was in 1914, when the then editor-in-chief of American Vogue, Edna Woolman Chase, organized the so-called fashion fit. She said that she had the idea for this event on a bus ride because she wanted to celebrate American designers. Up until then, American designers were working under the shadow of Parisian couture. They often copied Parisian designs or they were just not seen for their own designs. And this is something that she wanted to change. Needless to say, she caused a big rift with uh, French uh, couture houses and she had to mend the relationship by organizing a similar event uh, in Paris later on. And war seemed to have been a major impulse for New York Fashion Week. In 1943, Press Week was launched and this was another precursor event of Fashion Week. And it was actually born out of a necessity. Under German occupation, Parisian haute couture had suffered, some houses had actually closed, and it was also not possible for American journalists or buyers to travel to Paris to see the garments. Eleanor Lambert, a PR expert, had the idea of showcasing American talent at the famous Plaza Hotel. She invited American journalists. So this event was clearly a press event, hence the name. The buyers had to book private appointments at the showrooms. And this press week was a big success. And after this, the press week and runway shows were more loosely organized. And in the 70s and 80s, 
New York designers showcased their collections at restaurants, at clubs or at lofts. And New York Fashion Week as we know it today was actually born accidentally, quite literally, because Fern Mallis, the then executive director of the CFDA, the Council of Fashion Designers of America, attended a fashion show by Michael Kors in 1990 and the base was thumping in this loft and suddenly some ceiling plaster fell down onto the models and also the audience people left through the fire escapes and this was not the only show where things like this happened so she saw the need of formalizing fashion week and also make it safer the first of this formal new york fashion week took place at a hotel in 44th street but she soon started negotiating with Bryant Park, which still hosts New York Fashion Week intense until today. And also the CFDA formed a separate organization called 7th on 6th. And this organization formalized the schedule, the press work, the PR work, and also the sponsorship. Now let's travel back to Europe, but again not Paris, because Italy was actually ahead in the game of hosting fashion weeks. Today we have Milan Fashion Week, but when everything started, multiple cities in Italy were actually campaigning to become the sartorial capital of the country. Among them was Florence. And Florence actually made sense because in and around Florence, there is a big leather and textile manufacturing industry. And in 1951, an aristocrat and businessman called Giovanni Battista Giorgini hosted runway shows in his own residence, but also in the famous Palazzo Pitti. And he invited Italian designers like Emilio Pucci or the Fontana sisters, who were very famous at the time, to showcase their designs. And then he also invited buyers, mainly from America, for example, from Saks Fifth Avenue or Bergdorf Goodman. And this event was very, very successful. It also caused a lot of chaos in the city. But it was not only Florence uh, that was campaigning, there was also Venice and Rome, and especially Rome with its uh, Cinecittà studios, because there was uh, Federico Fellini, the director, who put Italy on the international map of an attractive tourist destination, and also the Fontana sisters, who I mentioned before, created garments for Audrey Hepburn or Elizabeth Taylor, for example, and this all contributed to this myth around Italian sartorial style. But none of these cities won the battle for the most sartorial cities of Italy. It is actually a bit ironic because Milan slowly cemented its position as the most fashionable capital. And and I say cemented on purpose because initially Milan was not known for its fashion. It was a very wealthy city because there was a lot of industry in Milan and around it. And it was not necessarily known for its fashion. But what made it interesting is this industry around it was also textile related. So a lot of designers chose to come to Milan to be close to the suppliers. In 1958, the Camera Nazionale della Moda was founded and it started to host fashion weeks to put Italian talent on the world map. And uh, Italian labels had already been known for being more affordable than Parisian couture, for example, but they were also known for the innovative use of textiles when we think of Missoni, for example. In 1961, Vogue Italia also made Milan their headquarters, and it also helped that in the 1970s, Giorgio Armani started his label in the city. And then, of course, when we think of the 80s and 90s, we have to mention Gianni Versace, who, with his shows, further elevated the reputation of Milan. Probably his most famous show was in 1991 with the supermodels Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista and Christy Turlington. And of course, there are many more brands which are based in Milan. Gucci and Prada are just two very famous of them. Now let's finally come to Paris, where for a very long time the designers themselves loosely organized their runway shows. But the first step towards a more formalization was in 1945 when the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture issued rules that couture houses had to, at least twice a year, showcase 35 garments, day and evening wear, to keep their status as a couture house. Of course, the Parisian fashion scene knew what was going on in America. They closely followed Press Week. But according to Vogue, they had a secret weapon. And this secret weapon was no other than Christian Dior, 
who literally shaped fashion until the 1960s. And at the time, there were many other very talented and famous designers in the city. We had Hubert de Givenchy, Yves Saint Laurent, Pierre Balmain, Jacques Fart. And Paris Fashion Week, as we know it today, goes back to 1973 to an event called the Battle of Versailles. And this was a fashion show featuring very famous designers from France, Yves Saint Laurent, Hubert de Givenchy, Dior and the Marc Bohan, Pierre Cardin and Emmanuel Ungaro. And they competed against American designers. These designers designers were Anne Klein Halston, Bill Bless, Oscar de la Renta and Stephen Burroughs and at the time they were relatively unknown in Europe and what was very special about this event is that despite the location in Versailles and the magnitude of the French designers many fashion experts actually said that the American designers won this battle. And from then onwards, Paris Fashion Week became more and more extravagant. Maybe you remember the famous show by Thierry Mugler in 1984 in the Zenit Stadium, which was open to the public. Also Jean-Paul Gaultier's shows were always a big event, especially the Conic Brass, which were later worn by Madonna during her tour in 1990. And there was also a very special moment between fashion and sports because Yves Saint Laurent hosted a runway show just one hour before the Soccer World Cup in Paris in 1998. And uh, it involved 300 models. It was broadcast worldwide and it is reported that more than 1.7 billion people watched that show. And of course, when we talk about extravaganza in Paris, we have to talk about Karl Lagerfeld's shows for Chanel, which were ultra extravagant. And until today, Paris is an exception among the big four because it's the only fashion capital that also dedicates an entire week to haute couture. Now let's move to the last of the big four. Let's move to London Fashion Week. It is also the youngest fashion week and similar to the others there were less formalized events before it became London Fashion Week and in this respect one person is very often mentioned he is called Percy Savage he was an Australian who also lived in Paris and he is said to have helped the career of Yves Saint Laurent before moving to London and in London, he then hosted runway shows, for example, the New Wave show or also London Collections. And he invited celebrities, for example, Bianca Jagger or Princess Margaret. And he showcased national talent, for example, Sandra Rhodes. But London Fashion Week was founded by an organization, by the British Fashion Council, which was founded in 1983. And they hosted the first Fashion Week in 1984. They also introduced the Designer of the Year Award in the same year. And it is actually quite funny because this first uh, London Fashion Week was held in a car park. But we are talking about Britain here. So of course it was a royal car park. It was the Commonwealth Institute's car park. And for a very long time, this was together with the Kensington Olympia, a main location of London Fashion Week. The London fashion scene in the mid 80s was heavily influenced by clubs and counterculture. So this was also reflected in London Fashion Week. But needless to say, after some time, also the establishment noticed London Fashion Week. And in 1985, Princess Diana invited some designers to Lancaster House. The economic downturn in Britain in the 1990s also affected London Fashion Week. So the event was reduced used fewer designers were invited nevertheless the london fashion scene was thriving there were designers like alexander mcqueen or also stella mccartney who invited her friends kate moss and naomi campbell to walk for her on the runway and the british fashion council also launched their new gen scheme to foster national talent because there was a reason for that there was a big exodus of designers and creative talent who moved abroad, for example, Alexander McQueen moved to New York at the end of the 1990s. Nevertheless, there were designers also in London, for example, there was Christopher Kane, Erdem or Mary Katranzu. And then slowly London started to attract more and more designers. And in 2009, even Burberry came back from Milan to London. And we have reached the end of our travels to the big four of the fashion weeks. Now, what about you? Did you know about the history of the runway shows and the fashion weeks? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also head over to thepinklookbook.com for more fashion related articles. And don't forget to check out my fashion label Pelagona. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you would also enjoy watching my other video about the most recent haute couture show by Schiaparelli. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon.